Today, part two of our Suzuki build, as Project Samurai goes from mild to wild. Plus, before you buy tires and suspension parts, they gotta pass the test here. We'll travel the Moab Rim Trail with design engineers anxious to show off their latest. Extreme 4x4 starts now. Hey guys, welcome to Extreme 4x4 in part two of our Suzuki Samurai build. Basically a small trail truck that is designed to go through the trails while the other trail trucks have to go over them or can't even make it through them. Plus, it's all done on a budget. Now so far, we've gutted all the drivetrain. There's two used rebuilt Toyota axles sitting underneath it on a four link with coils front and rear. Also dropped the transfer case out to get ready for a set of low ratio gears. Now budget wise, how much have we spent? So far, including the tires is 2,600 and we're gonna get out of here by the end of the day with less than a grand. Oh yeah. Cha-ching! Very springy. Now if you remember, we pulled the transfer case out of our Suzuki last time in order to get it ready for a set of low ratio gears. Now the nice thing about the gear ratios available for this small divorce transfer case is that the most popular one is a six and a half to one low gear ratio. What that means is by installing these gears into the transfer case, we don't have to change the axle gears in order to get a good crawl ratio for our 35 inch tall tires. Now our kit comes from trail gear and not only does it include the gears and all the idler shafts, but also all the bearings and seals. So when we're done, the transfer case will be fully rebuilt and good to go. With the fluid drained and the four wheel drive indicator and detent ball removed, both front and rear yokes can be taken off. Woo. Then remove the lock tab on the counter shaft and the case is ready to be split. The input gear, counter shaft gears and output shaft gears are next. Completely disassemble the output gear assembly. Then replace the low speed and high speed gears with the new pieces and trail gear. Then strip the input shaft of both bearings and install them onto the new unit. Put the counter shaft in to see where the case must be clearanced and grind where required. Then reassemble the transfer case, reversing the order that it came apart in, using all new gaskets and seals. Afterwards, it can be installed back into the truck. We also got a bunch of stuff from Trail Gear, including diff armor, creeper gussets and front knuckle rebuild kits because when you're servicing your Toyota axle when you're doing a solid axle swap is great insurance when you're out on the trail. Now one of the reasons that the Suzuki Samurai is so popular on the trails is because of its weight. They're really lightweight trail rigs and also they just look really cool. Now on this one we will be adding a complete exo cage because we have to trim away these body panels that are getting in the way of our larger tires. Now what some people do is basically back half these trucks and turn them into almost like a tube buggy. Now we don't want to do that because we still want to keep the style of the Suzuki itself. Now the reason the cage is going on the outside, honestly there's just no room inside. Now I know what you guys are thinking. That looks like a pretty good truck to just start cutting into pieces. But trust me, if you take your time, measure, cut in the right places, when all the tube gets put in, this thing will look just as good, if not better, than when we rolled it in here in the first place. To the front! Now with the tires in place, you can really get an idea of what this truck is going to look like as a finished project. Now so far, including the transfer case gears, we're well under three grand with this thing and it's looking like a serious trail machine, but right now it needs some tube.
Now, sometimes when you're building an exo cage like this, the hardest part is honestly choosing where to start. Now the majority of this cage is going to be inch and a half DOM tubing. And I've taken this six foot long piece and put a 45 degree angle at the front to carry up underneath the bar that will run into the hood. This will be our starting point. And then we'll take a similar piece with another 45 degree angle and just continue it on from the back, keeping everything as close to the body as we can to keep it nice and tight on the trail. to Extreme 4x4. You know, we get emails all the time asking us where our favorite place to go wheeling is. Ian, what's yours? I would say Calabogie, Ontario, mid-February, minus 20, snow wheeling. Wow. I would have to say Moab, Utah, with gorgeous views, endless amounts of rocks, and the weather is always great. With well over 50 trails, there's no place on the planet quite like Moab, Utah. They call Moab the mecca of off-roading. There are so many trails, so there's something for everybody. What makes wheeling here unique is the Slick Rock. Slick Rock got its name by the cowboys that were here in those early days. Steel hoofs on the horses, you know, sliding around out there chasing after those long-eared cattle. They didn't like it at all if they had to go chase cattle on Slick Rock. The name stuck. And nowadays, so do the tires. And it's not slick. The stuff is literally like 36 grit sandpaper. You can push the limits of your tires of your vehicle farther than any other place I've ever seen. You can drive up 60, 70 degree angles like they're nothing. To clear those angles requires the proper technique. The mullet bump gets you up stuff. Put two tires up on the front, bring it forward. And as the rear tire starts to approach the base of the bump, uh, you have to give it just a little bit of inertia to get the car to jump up over an obstacle. Very nice. Every year, thousands come to run the Slip Rock during the Easter Jeep Safari. And everyone here agrees, there's one can't miss trail. Moab Rim Trail. From what I feel, one of the best rock crawling trails in Moab. This year, four wheel drive hardware gathered up the industry heavies who showed off their newest parts on the four plus rated trails. I'm going to the rim. Ascending 1,500 feet, the 10 mile out and back run left some sweat on the brow and a few hearts in the throat. The biggest thing is the pucker factor. These ledges are right on the edge of a cliff, so it really makes it interesting. Kind of shows the men are men. Keeping them puckered are nasty obstacles like Devil's Crack and the Z-Turn. It's a pretty gnarly trail. I haven't seen anything like this anywhere else. The obstacles are unreal. There's even sand dunes. A little bit of everything, exactly. I love the rocks, but when you get to the sand and you see the sand, it's, it's something you got to play in it. Pro Comp's design engineer, Ryan Kennelly. I love my job. Knew that his company's new suspension system would ace the rocks and sand. I'm fairly confident that we're going to get all through this and not have any problems. He had good reason to be cocky. In areas where there's rocks passing through, I gave it all kinds of extra clearance to make sure that you could get through the obstacle easily. I bent the arms so that there would be areas for the tires to swing through, give you lots of clearance so the tires aren't rubbing on the suspension, binding up your axle. We want to focus on the individuals that want to go farther. Success on a four plus rated trail takes more than a well-designed suspension system. The most critical part of the suspension is the tires. Scott Ward is president of Pro Comp Tires, and he didn't show up here empty-handed. This year, we busting out the uh, extreme mud terrain. It's a new tire for us, uh, very exciting tread design, very high-tech. It's a Armor Tech 3 sidewall construction, which is a three-ply sidewall. Two of the plies are, are parallel to each other, and then with the third ply, we just kick it about two degrees, and it gives it that extra strength it needs to resist any sticks or pinching it on rocks and stuff like that. I think we've, uh, we've hit a home run with it. As the group descended Moab Rim, everyone agreed. The four-wheel drive hardware run is on its way to becoming a Jeep Safari staple. You guys put on an excellent, excellent run. We can't wait for next year's Easter Jeep Safari. The way it looks now, I'm going to be coming back until I probably can't come back anymore. Now, if you'd like to try out Moab Rim or any of the other trails at Moab, go to our website after the show and we'll have a link to the Red Rock Four Wheelers Club where you can find out how you can sign up to get on these trails during the Easter Jeep Safari. But make sure you do it soon because they book up really fast. This Extreme Tech Tip is brought to you by Mobile One, providing advanced protection against extreme heat and stress. 
Here's a tip that'll help take the guesswork out of using your bender for the first time or just a new set of dies. Go ahead and take some scrap pieces of tubing and make some master bends to the popular angles. But before you bend it, mark the location of the shoe where it meets the die. Then when it comes time to bend the actual piece of the cage itself, you have a guideline to go by. You can simply mark the location of the shoe, put the straight piece into the bender, and you'll end up with a perfect bend every time. Hey guys, welcome back to Extreme 4x4. And as you can see, our Suzuki has undergone an amazing transformation, especially now that we have the body clearance for our 35 inch tall tires and have this section of the exo cage all tacked into place. You guys have seen us build a lot of roll cages and a lot of two bumpers over the past few years. And you recently heard us talk about how to design a roll cage. Well, when you put the roll cage on the outside of the truck, things get a little tricky. One problem is being able to weld on the inside of the exo cage itself where it gets really close to the truck's body. Now on our Suzuki we're not too concerned because we're going to actually be welding this sheet metal to the exo cage itself. But if you had a truck where you wanted to keep the body in really good shape, here's a couple tips for you. Plan your welds so you can pull the cage itself away from the body to finish weld the inside. Another thing you can do is place a welding glove between the joint and the truck itself. This will help keep the heat from bubbling up the paint. If you cover the panels with a light coat of grease, it will help keep the weld spatter from burning into the paint. Or you can use spatter paper like this, available at most body shop supply stores. Now as you can see, Ian has fully built the other side of the exoskeleton to help support that cut body panel. Had he cut both sides of the body without supporting it, we would have had a little bit of a problem with the entire body going a little cattywampus. But that wasn't the only reason why the passenger side was built first. When you build an exo cage, there's a lot of trial fitting of the tubing. You have to work around the body, and if you build the passenger side first and keep notes of how long each tube is, where the bend took place, and at what angle, when it comes time to finish up the driver's side, you'll have a road map to follow, and the cage will look perfect. It's like peeling a rusty banana. Now just like there's specific tips and tricks when building an exo cage, there's also different ways to weld all that tubing together. Now there's three distinct torch weave patterns when we're talking about MIG welding steel across a single joint. And all of them are basically welding one piece onto the other. The first one is what's called a straight push and a stall. You're basically holding the torch really steady, you're moving forward, stopping, or even going back over your weld continuing forward again, backing up, and then continuing all the way along the tubing. The second one is a circular pattern. You're basically doing circles across the joint all the way around the tube again. And the last one is a C pattern. You're starting on one piece of tubing, moving on to the other, basically drawing the letter C with the tip of the torch. Now each one of these looks different and has a different effect on the tube itself. And to give you an idea of all three patterns, I've got these three pieces of tubing tacked onto this piece of scrap. I'll do one pattern on each one and show you what they look like. The straight push pattern is when the torch tip is held steady all the way around the tube joint. To ensure proper penetration, the torch has to be stalled or even moved backward during the weld. The circular pattern is exactly what it sounds like. Small circles from one piece of tube onto the other, overlapping the pre-existing molten puddle. During a C pattern, the torch is being moved in the shape of the letter C from one side of the joint onto the other. Now looking at these examples, there's some drawbacks to two of these types of torch weave patterns. The first one being the push and then stall. As we work this torch tip around the joint itself and then stop 
or back the tip up to get good penetration into the steel, we're actually starving the weld of the shielding gas that's coming out of this nozzle. We're also contaminating the weld puddle that's trying to cool by going back and basically re-welding it. And we have a similar problem with the circular pattern. As we make the little circles around the joint itself, we're going back into a previously cooled weld joint, starving it of that shielding gas again, and basically contaminating that weld. Now the type that I prefer is the last one, being the C pattern. It allows the weld to always be moving in a forward direction. You have good coverage over that weld with the shielding gas, and it also allows you to work on the penetration by determining how fast you move the torch over each side of the piece of tube. Now obviously because this was a mock-up, we welded each one of these only halfway around. But if this was a real cage, you'd want to pick your starting point and try to get all the way around that tube in one shot. Welcome back to Extreme 4x4 in our Suzuki build-up. Here's a flashback at what our little samurai looked like as a daily commuter right before we brought it into the shop and took the torch to it. Now it's a wild trail truck that'll go anywhere we want it to. With Toyota axles front and rear and four lengths all the way around, plus the new super soft coil springs underneath it, this thing will be able to articulate over almost anything on the trail. Plus, with a 6.5 to 1 low gear ratio in the transfer case, it'll have the gearing to handle these new 35-inch tall tires. Even though what we're about to do is referred to as a poser shot, it's a good idea to flex your suspension on your truck to test for any binding or tire rubbing issues. Okay. That's good right there, Justin. Now, as you can see, we do have some tire contact issues with the frame itself. And we kind of expected this because of the offset of the wheels we used to make these beadlocks. Now that's nothing that can't be fixed by putting some wheel spacers behind the rim and basically moving it out about an inch and a half. Now we'll put matching spacers up front and that way the track width will be the same front and rear. Now this thing flexes like mad and honestly we could throw in a battery and a fuel cell, take it out to the trail because it's ready for that. And for not a lot of money because as it sits right now, 3400 bucks, including tubing. And that's how most guys would leave a truck like this. Basically wheel it for a couple years and then plan future upgrades. But this is extreme 4x4 and there's still one upgrade that this trail truck definitely could use. Now a problem that you get when you're wheeling with a carbureted engine is that the fuel level in the flow blow sloshes back when you go off camber, starving the engine for fuel. And the obvious fix for that would be EFI. Now what if I told you the EFI setup we've got planned for this truck is not only going to give us more horsepower and more torque, but the fuel is going to cost us zero dollars per gallon. And for that surprise, you're just going to have to keep watching Extreme. Right here. <laughs> 